Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review from the beer room of all places. Today I'm going to be reviewing this fella, Crane's Cider. Um, I've only ever seen Crane's Cider in um, Asda. So this is their, it says here Crane's Cranberry Cider, then it says Blueberries and Apples. Um, Crafted by the by founders and twin brothers. And then it says some stuff on the back that I can't read. Standard 4% offering. Let's give it a whirl. Oh. I'm looking for the bottle. I've just put the bottle down. It's, hey. It's been a long day. Woke up at 6 o'clock on a Sunday. What's that about? I mean, really. I think it's better late as well. And I still woke up silly at times. Hey, let me build a clean glass. Look at that. You know it makes sense. So, what we would expect from the pour, um, colour wise. A white head, well, pinkish white head that soon disappeared. Um, looks a bit like, if you didn't know any of the difference, it could be Ribena. Um, from the look of it. When it came out of the bottle, the aroma was really strong. Now, a bit more subtle. Definitely getting them blueberries. I don't understand the cranberry uh, part of it. Unless it's, unless it's a cranberry base with blueberries and apples on top. Makes you wonder. Oh yeah, lots of flavour. And now it's starting to get warmer. Uh, very nice too. It's definitely it's definitely uh, that time of the year now when lagers, ciders, golden ales, pale ales will start to come more to the front. Although I don't know if Corona will, but that's different reasons for Corona. I mean, this weekend, we've been shopping this weekend and uh, we've done a bit of a trawl of the shops. Not looking, um, me, I look for beers, obviously. Not really fan to anything. I mean, there's, there's stuff I haven't bought, but uh, five for a bottle of lager from Tesco's. I will start stocking up, but at the moment, I'm still, still massively overstocked in the old beer department. So, just trying to get through it, because obviously stuff's going out of date. But anyway, um... You go down supermarkets, you go down, you go down the, the paracetamol aisle. Uh, you know, the aisle where all the paracetamols are. My God, it's empty. You go down the hand cleaning, you know, like the hand sanitizer aisle. Empty. You go down the toilet roll aisle. Empty. And you think to yourself, why are you stockpiling? You know, shops will not run out of stock. Very, very, very unlikely. There's, I mean, a lot of it's produced in this country anyway, and a lot of this, you know, and this is where, as a country, moving forward, we need to go back to being the ones that produces it, manufactures it, sells it. Don't buy it from abroad, do it in your own country. Then the jobs stay in, in house, and you never rely on anybody else. We've got water all the way around us. You're not telling me that they can't. Um, use water, you know, water, some water power to make massive um, power stations at sea that could go round the whole of Britain. There's got, to, you know, the, the if you can do it on waterfall, surely you can do it with all the waves in the sea. There's, there's got to be a way. But anyway, let's get back to the the thing yeah apparently corona their sales have dropped a lot since this virus was broke out there's a lot of people out there who really are silly but uh i won't take the mickey out then because it's uh you know some people just get worried don't they you know and the media have not helped the situation right let's get back to the uh the main event and these days 
in the cider area there is pretty much like the gin and craft beer area there has been an explosion the sheer amount of different flavoured ciders is unbelievable um, ranging from traditional ciders like nettle ciders to palmer violets to this one blueberries and apples five or six years ago maybe the nettle one existed but a lot of these other varieties did not exist and you can blame well not blame but you can certainly point to gins and craft beers opening the floodgates to lots of new varieties same with craft beers um, who heard of a sour six years ago? I hadn't ever heard of one, didn't even know they existed three years ago. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting it a year and a half ago when I did my first sour bear review. And uh, it's amazing how it's, the, it's all changing. Will it change back? You never know. You never know. It's, uh, it's hard to say really, isn't it? What I will say is trends come and go. Um, my wife loves uh, vodka mud shakes. And they were around big time at one stage. Nah, they're only available in Australia, which is great if you live in Australia. Not so great if you live in the UK. Um, it's a pity you can't get a vodka mud shake recipe. Hmm, there's an idea. I've tried before, but it's not easy to do. Just curdles the uh, milk, which isn't a good thing. Or you make it far too strong and the wife won't drink it anyway. That's my fault. Oh, so I've just put the wood down for a new decking area. I've scrounged the wood. Someone was chucking it away, so I got hold of it, bought it some. Ripped up the lawn, the, another lawn that we put, put down. It was crap anyway. Um, I found out that I found out why it was crap. That I, I'd left wood underneath <laughs> some fence pallets, like fences that I got, gates that I got years ago. Just put a bit of soil on top. You know, even the best of us can be uh, lazy at times, and uh, so. Sort of that leveled it off, and now the joists are in place. They might have to be a little bit of, to you know, I haven't I haven't cemented them in yet, so I might have to at some stage. And then put the uh, we're using scaffold boards, twelve pound a scaffold board, four meters long, near enough, twenty two centimeters wide, and uh, imagine when they're put down. Wow, it's going to be solid. And uh, hopefully they'll colour up or 160 quid for the scaffold boards, about 15 quid for the screws. And bish bash bosh, a new decking area. And one that should last for God knows how many years. I mean, you've seen our scaffold boards last on, on, on building sites. And uh, as long as they're not sitting on the soil, you're laughing. You know, anything that sits on the soil is going to rot, eventually anyway. So again, um, Crane Cider, this is the second of three that I've had from them and uh, I think the first one was a pomegranate cider and that was nice too. This again, um, with all these different varieties of ciders it really opens the floodgates to everybody. Um, I would say especially more women, women who don't really like drinking alcohol, but don't mind blueberries or the taste of blueberries, cranberries, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it definitely opens them floodgates. Obviously, there's a lot of people who are traditional um, cider drinkers who like apple ciders who wouldn't even touch this because for them it's, you know, it's not the done thing. But for me... I love them harder. I don't think you could ever get drunk on them. I mean, you'd have to drink all day long and you'd probably drink yourself sober. I know it's 4%, but it don't taste like 4% to me. It, it just tastes like alcoholic Ribena in a lot of ways. Oh, are we in for a dry spell? Let's hope so. It's middle of, Feb middle of March nearly now. Um, well, it will be in a five days time. Um, you know, we've got to be looking forward to a nice summer, a dry summer. Not as dry as two years ago, because that was a little bit too dry. 
but certainly drier than last year, which was a bit too damp. Now you want a nice midway sort of thing. Nice to get the old October hat and uh, get the gazebo up, get all the furniture out on the garden with the cushions and you know, you come home at night, you think, oh, I'm not sitting in the house, I'm going to sit outside and chill. And do a beer review in the garden. Although I think my neighbours have taken the mickey out of me from the window. <clears throat> so, that ready, reddish colour that you associate with Ribena. Um, pinkish white tinge on the foam, on the... Good carbonation and lacing, as you'd expect. It's fizzy, it's sparkling. On the nose, certainly got the blueberry. Apple was more in the background. Uh, on opening the bottle, it was really stronger. After a minute, it was more subtle. On the taste, the taste was brilliant. Then blueberries and apples, really good. There was nothing, it wasn't too strong, too tart. It, it was a good crowd-pleasing cider. So, I left any and ever. Hey, it was got check. Um, out of five then. Yeah, I think this was a good cider. Um, I've not seen any other blueberry ciders, not like I remember. I think maybe Copperberger brought one out. I think they did. Uh, but anyway, blueberry and apple, different. And uh, it's amazing to see so many new, different types of cider out there. Wow. Um, whether they'll all survive in the bigger market, I don't know. Depends, because... The cider market might just grow. Um, I've not checked on the sales statistics for that, and it's not really my interest to, you know, my interest is if it tastes good or not, which it does. Um, yeah, I love the flavour. 4%, I do wish they'd bring out some stronger uh, fruity ciders for those of us who like them a bit stronger. Uh, but I, there must be some um, taxation thing because it's been it's been a thing for years now, this 4%, so maybe there's a tax thing on, on higher than 4%. percent would love to know from anybody who actually brews this stuff why 4% is the uh, preferred alcohol content. Anybody at Crane Cider, please fill us in. Um, out of 5 then, 4.3 out of 5. Yeah, really nice. Not quite my top 10 cider, but still very decent as it is. Lovely. Another one for the uh, ticked off list. Right, I'm going to sit down now and chill out for a bit. Thanks for watching. See you soon.